Joseph Smith, his father Joseph Sr., and his brother Hiram were actively involved in the occult while living in Palmyra, New York. Joseph Sr. considered his money digging an occupation and often brought Joseph Jr. with him on his expeditions. This involved special rituals and ceremonies which were performed for the purpose of obtaining buried treasure. It is through these expeditions that Joseph found his beloved seer stone, which he used to try to locate treasures of gold and silver. Joseph would place his magical rock into a hat and pull the hat up to his face to block out all light. By doing this, he claimed he could see supernaturally and would help those who were digging by locating the place where the treasure was buried and observing the spirits that were guarding it. Joseph and his father's money digging continued until at least March of 1826. On March 15, 1842, Joseph joined the Masons, which is an organization that believes Jesus is not divine and is on the same level as Buddha, Muhammad, or any other religious teacher. Within one day, Smith rose to the highest degree, which is the sublime degree. Joseph's Masonic membership affected the development of the Mormon church in many ways, but the most significant area appears to be in the development of the Mormon temple ceremonies. On May 4, 1842, only two months after joining the Masons, Joseph introduced the temple endowment ceremony. LDS historian Dr. Reed Durham had this to say about the Masonic influence on the Mormon religion. There is absolutely no question in my mind that the Mormon ceremony, which came to be known as the endowment, introduced by Joseph Smith to Mormon Masons, had an immediate inspiration from Masonry. It is also obvious that the Nauvoo Temple architecture was in part Masonically influenced. Indeed, it appears that there was an intentional attempt to utilize Masonic symbols and motifs. I suggest that enough evidence presently exists to declare the entire institution of the political kingdom of God, including the Council of Fifty, the Living Constitution, the proposed flag of the kingdom, and the anointing and coronation of the king, had its genesis in connection with Masonic thoughts and ceremonies. It appears that the prophet first embraced Masonry, and then in the process, he modified, expanded, amplified, or glorified it. Dr. Durham also said, included in the actual vocabulary of Joseph Smith's counsel and instructions to the sisters were such words as ancient orders, examinations, degrees, candidates, secrets, lodges, rules, signs, tokens, order of the priesthood, and keys, all indicating that the society's orientation possessed Masonic overtones. In April of 1974, Dr. Durham announced an important find, not realizing the implication of his discovery. In his presidential address to the Mormon History Association, he spoke of yet another interesting occultic article called the Jupiter Talisman, which was described by Joseph's wife, Emma, as one of the prophet's intimate possessions. Dr. Durham had this to say about the mystical powers of the talisman. When properly invoked, with Jupiter being very powerful and ruling in the heavens, these intelligences by the power of ancient magic guaranteed to the possessor of this talisman the gain of riches and favor and power and love and peace and to confirm honors and dignities and counsels. Talismatic magic further declared that anyone who worked skillfully with this Jupiter table would obtain the power of stimulating anyone to offer his love to the possessor of the talisman, whether from a friend, brother, relative, or even any female. In the same address, Dr. Durham also stated in some very real and quite mysterious sense, this particular table of Jupiter was the most appropriate talisman for Joseph Smith to possess. Indeed, it seemed meant for him because on all levels of interpretation, planetary, mythological, numerological, astrological, mystical Kabbalism, and talismatic magic, the prophet was in every case appropriately described. 
This is a very significant finding because we keep close to us the things which we find important. And for Joseph, that was riches, power, and his love of women. We know that these were the beliefs of Joseph Smith right up until he took his last breath. This talisman was found in Joseph's pocket the day he died in Carthage. Another thing that was really interesting in studying the roots of Mormonism was to find out that Joseph Smith wore a Jupiter's talisman and uh, his brother Hiram had the family parchment and they kept those on their bodies hidden. Another thing that most Mormons do not realize was that Brigham Young was cut from the same cloth. He wore a bloodstone around his neck as protection until the day he died. One indication we have uh, as an insight into Joseph Smith's character is the value he placed in a particular magic object called a Jupiter's talisman that he had had through his life. We aren't sure just when he first got it, but evidently as a teenager. But he kept it on his person until his death. And a Jupiter's talisman is a magic object that one would use to uh, empower one with uh, money, finances, uh, power over people, power over women. All of these things were items Joseph's life was geared towards. He wanted power, he wanted money, and he wanted women. Uh, the fact that he died with the Jupiter talisman on his body shows that throughout his life, he continued to hang on to that hope and that trust in that magic object. 